Hi everybody, so this week we're going to start talking about how to make maps and in this module we're going to be working with choropleth maps and choropleth maps are the kind of maps you see where a country or a region, sometimes it's a province, sometimes it's a state, sometimes it's a county is shaded based on the value of some variable um, you know, darker for higher levels of a variable, higher values lighter for lower levels or vice versa, etc. So we'll be working with choropleth maps and learning how to make those. And along the way, we're gonna learn about simple features. Um, simple features are a way of storing uh, data for polygons. Um, and in our case, those would be country boundaries, um, but could be boundaries of any kind. Um, and the way that they're stored in simple features format is really convenient for data science. They're stored in a column uh, where every cell in the column represents the shape of a particular case. In our, in our examples, it's gonna be a country case, okay? Um, and the way that we're gonna get access to our simple features is we're gonna be working with a package uh, called R Natural Earth. Uh, there are lots of packages like this uh, but the one we're going to be working with for our country level data is our natural earth and um, Our natural earth has country shapes in um, Both simple features and in the older spatial objects format, but we're going to be using the simple features okay. So let's go ahead and get started um, uh, We're just going to call this using our natural earth for our first section here. Uh, and let's actually add one thing we can start doing is being a little more detailed in our YAML headers. So here we can say our sub uh, subtitle should be Choropleth Maps. So let's go ahead and add that. And uh, let's go ahead and grab some country shapes with the any underscore countries uh, function. Um, so any here just stands for natural earth. Um, and so we're going to add a, okay, let's, we're going to say let's grab some country shapes uh, for mapping and we'll add code chunk, we'll label it country shapes. And let's um, let's load our packages. We're going to load our natural earth, assuming you have it installed. Library. If not, you might want to pause the video and do that. We're going to load dpy r, and then we're going to store some country shapes. Uh, we're going to extract some data from our natural earth, and we're going to store it in this object world map world underscore map underscore df um, for data frames. So ne countries is the function we want. We're going to specify scale equals medium return class equals sf for simple features. And then one thing we usually want to do and you can mess around with this and see how it looks if you don't do this but um, usually we want to um, extract Antarctica or we want to deselect Antarctica because our map is usually going to look better uh, without it. So we'll filter on the name column and we'll say name does not equal Antarctica. All right, so we're moving Ant Antarctica there. And then we'll go ahead and we will glimpse these data. All right. So let's go ahead and run that. Okay, so there we there we go. There we have our data from our natural earth. And um, so we have a lot of data here. I'll just point out a few things. First of all, if you scroll to the bottom, 
uh, we have our geometry column, and this is where the data for the country shapes is. Okay, and we'll take a closer look at that in a second. Um, but that is probably the most important thing. And then the next most important thing is going to be the data, or the uh, country codes that you want to merge your data on. And the one that I'm going to zero in on here, which we're going to be making a lot of use of, is ISO underscore A3 underscore EH. I'm actually not sure what EH stands for, but um, if you use this one and you try and you merge it with ISO 3C codes, that almost always works. If you try to use some of these others, like this is an ISO 3C code as well, that should work. And this is an ISO 2C code. These are ISO 2C codes. I find that oftentimes these are missing France or France's country codes, Norway's country codes. Some Central African countries are missing country codes. And so when you try to do your choropleth map, you get some grayed out countries. Uh, or in the past, I've actually had countries drop off the map altogether. Like it looks like France has just sunk into the Atlantic Ocean or something. Um, so I'm going to encourage you to use this ISO underscore A3 underscore EH. Um, and then also notice that there's some data here on population, GDP, um, the type of economy, income group. And you can use those to make some preliminary maps. And in some cases, they might be helpful uh, for some visualizations that you want to make. Okay, one more thing I want to do here before we move on is just I'm going to comment this out for a second and I just want to take a closer look at the geom uh, column. So we'll just do world map data frame and we're just going to do select just to print it geometry. I said geom, sometimes, you know, these columns are called geom, usually geom or geometry. So, um, okay, so let's go ahead and just run that, just run that code chunk again. And this time we're gonna print out the geometry so you get a sense of what that looks like. So that's roughly what it looks like. And we can also click on the data frame and we can have uh, a look at each one of these cells and what I just want to show you quickly the details aren't as important as just kind of knowing getting the general the basic gist of it but this is uh, these data are in in a list form so that's so that's what's kind of unique about this special uh, features format okay let's close out of that Okay, so now that we have our data, let's go ahead and use some of the data that's already in that data frame to make our first plot. Let's make a map with geom sf. All right, we'll put a code chunk in there. We will label it. Uh, we'll call it first map. And um, let's load ggplot2. And uh, because we're gonna make this map with ggplot, we're gonna use geo, uh, geom underscore sf to make the choropleth map, okay? There are other ways to do this, but for our purposes, this will work well because we are already intimately familiar with ggplot. So uh, data equals world map, Sorry, not a pipe operator, but a plus. Geom underscore SF, A E S. So our aesthetic here is going to be fill equals income underscore group. Okay. And then plus. And then we can label it. Just give it a title equals. Um, oh, so I neglected to explain what I'm doing here. So this is from the data frame that we just made, I said that there was some economic data in there and one variable is income group. So we're just mapping that, okay? So, uh, so our title is going to be world bank country income categories, right? 
because that's what we're mapping. High income, low income, upper middle income, lower middle income, and low income. Here we go. And there it is. There's our first map. Okay. Okay, notice how this uh, map, first of all, World Bank is misspelled here. But what I really want to point out is how this map has a, a lot of white space around it. Okay, so one thing that we can do to fix that is we can put a code chunk up here. And I have this in the pre-work section. So let's just call this setup. And then in here, uh, what we can do is we can put this bit of code this is called a NIDAR hook. And what this hook does, this bit of code, we call NIDAR, which is a package uh, for knitting these code chunks, uh, knitting the document. So uh, this, we call NIDAR and we tell it knit hooks, we tell it we want to set up a hook and then crop equals knit our colon colon hook underscore PDF crop. Okay, and this is if we just put then from there, uh, what we do from there is we put in our code chunk crop colon true. Uh, then what happens is when we render it, this white space will go away. If we just run it here, it doesn't do anything. But when we render it, it should get rid of that white space. And here we go, moment of truth. And yes, as you can see that white space, well, that got kind of messed up, but if you can see that, that white space is now gone. Okay. Okay, so let's just move on to our last item of business, which is gonna be to make this map more accessible and to make it look a little better. Um, so we'll see say let's beautify our map and here we can insert a code chunk beautify. label it oh, I forgot my hash pipe and from here we will uh, go ahead and we're just gonna grab this little chunk here and before that we paste that in let's call gg themes because we're going to use um theme map from gg themes to change the background here uh fill out the space a little bit better and uh, just improve the look of it okay so we'll take our code from last time and we're going to add one thing before we change the theming which is uh, we want to um, improve actually uh, the legend here a little bit and so specifically we want to um, change the legend title here so we'll say fill equals category And then what we'll do is we'll add a Viridis theme to it. So scale, fill, Viridis. So this works similar to, uh, say for example, a histogram column chart, uh, where you're using scale fill as opposed to scale color like you would for a, um, a scatter plot, for example. Um, so scale, fill, Viridis, underscore D, because this is a discrete variable we have, with which is uh, income categories, that's clearly a discrete variable. And then we'll add our theme, theme map from GG Themes. Okay, and let's see how that looks. And that uh, does look a lot better and much more accessible because remember that we said for colorblindness in module 2.2, when we talked about colorblindness, uh, we said that the worst combination was red and green and this map has a lot of red and green uh, so somebody with a red green color blindness wouldn't be able to distinguish for example between high income countries and upper middle income countries um, so this solves that problem plus it changes the background uh, it moves the legend it just looks a lot better
Okay, so that's it for this lesson. Um, that's how you extract the country shapes from uh, our natural earth. And that is how you make a basic map, a basic choropleth map. In the next lesson, we're going to learn how to merge data in from other sources. We're going to be working with data from the World Bank and making choropleth maps with those data. I'll see you in the next lesson.